And so we've got 40 seconds to exit. Now, do you know how to turn it off? Well, no. We're going to improvise, <laughs> right? Here you go. Four, three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers, where we transform ordinary homes into smart homes. I'm so excited, guys. I've taken the first step to take my friend's house and transform it into a smart home by giving them this home alarm system kindly sponsored by Boundary. They sent over their medium bundle, which has a hub, four motion sensors, two contact sensors, two key fobs, and an outdoor siren. Now you might be asking yourself, Gio, but why not just install Home Assistant and do it DIY? Well, I'm actually gonna actually tell you and address that question towards the end of the video. So stick around because I'm gonna actually show you all of the installation process and what went well and what didn't go so well and how we actually resolved it. Overall, my friend was super excited to start this smart home journey. I don't wanna share it with you. Okay, buddy, so what are we gonna to do today? We're gonna to get our boundary system out. So we've got this keypad over here. Now, the idea with the keypad is we've gotta put this close, maybe to your main entry, what do you think? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and, and what we'll do is we'll set it up and then we're gonna put it in the app. You can get a pin code in and then also you can have one of these little key fobs. So as you can have two of these key fobs, and they'll just tap to arm and tap again to disarm. So we'll get this all sorted. So we're gonna put a couple of these motion sensors around. So we've got two ways to put them in. Like we can either put them with sticky tapes or we can like drill them in. So maybe we'll have like one over there. I don't know, we'll figure it out now. We'll, we'll just go around the house and think about it. And then we're gonna have a couple of contact sensors. And uh, so basically you have two of these guys. So these are quite these little battery things that we need to just pull out and we need to put these on the door. Um, and then what they do is it's got like a bit of a magnet thing. So when you separate them out, you know, it's open and closed. So we're gonna put them on, on the two external doors. And then the big one is gonna be the outdoor siren. Yep. So apparently this guy actually sounds like a jet aircraft. So I don't know if we're gonna test it out or not. <laughs> <laughs> sounds a bit crazy, but basically, yeah, we've got the spirit level to right. put it up uh, nice and straight. And this is battery powered. Um, hopefully it's gonna last a few couple of a uh, couple of years, but you know we'll figure out. Uh, yeah, so we'll put this up, and we've got also all of the fixing, basically for everything uh, else. The hub is your central point, and that needs to be located somewhere where you have good Wi-Fi reception. Once you've connected the hub to Wi-Fi, then all of the other sensors will connect via Z-Wave back to the hub. The hub needs to be mains powered, but it also has a battery. It's got 12 hours of backup power. And the cable is a USB-C cable, which you can get of any length, but you'll get one provided in the box. Okay, so now let's get into the installation. Uh, center of center, so I just need to work out where my cable's gonna come through, um, and then mark out my fixings for the rest of the adapter. All right, cool. Okay, so I've measured the, the center of my area. Um, uh, there's where the center of the center of the box is. So I just know that the cable's gonna be coming through here, and then I can mark up my fixings. Okay, so we've got the cable through the wall for the power. Um, so we just need to make sure that's at the bottom so that the hole behind's not visible. And then we'll just go ahead and mark up where we want to put our fixings. And the important thing to remember is to always tap your raw plugs home to get the flattest possible fixing. So just make sure you've got enough cable through the other side. Um, pop that in there and then clip this in place. Oh, it's installing, I haven't clipped it in yet. Pressure's mounting, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. There you go. One on, clip, clip, push. Whoa, that's looking good. Okay guys, so once it's powered up, uh, it initialized, and then you're gonna need to select your Wi-Fi network and punch in your password. This over here doesn't look like, but it's a touch screen, actually it's quite responsive and you can see it moves up a lot. See the Wi-Fi symbol over here. You can also see the battery over here. So you can see the battery is charging, but in case of a power outage, it will go down. All right, so the firmware is updating now. It's so gonna be downloading the new version. Okay, so we rebooted, we've got a pairing code over here. And now we just need to set up the app. So go into your app store, download the Boundary app, and then we gotta go for, I think we go for the setup, right? Set up boundaries. Okay, so once we put the your address information in, uh, you've got two options, so you're either installing it yourself or you book the pro installation. Uh, we're installing it ourselves, so let's tap that. So now let's just punch in that pairing code that you'll see on the display 
uh, like this one over here. Okay, so once that's in, now this is an important one. You're gonna to need to create a pin code, which is gonna be your master pin to arm and disarm. So be really careful. Obviously don't share that out with anyone else. Awesome, so once that's done, you feel free to go and set up rooms as you wish, depending on how many sensors you've got. Uh, we've got to figure that part out. Uh, but we can see over here, the actual panel actually goes and says, ready to pair sensors. Can I do it? What? Oh, that always feels good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna add these contact sensors on right now. So first thing, we need to get access to our QR code, which is just here, I think. All right, nice. So let's get the app. You need to set up a room first, and once you've done that, we can just scan the QR code. Nice one. There you go. So at that point, we need to pull the battery tab out quite quickly. And let's see if it's powering. We've got a blue, blue thing powering. Let's see if it's gonna connect to the hub. Yay, so it connected up. So that took maybe 20, 30 seconds, and don't fear. All right, nice one. So let's just tap on continue. Okay, so we'll give this a name. But important thing to know that we need to add the on entry on exit route. So if this, basically if you have to get um, to and out of your house through one of these sensors and the same for the motion sensors, you need to turn it on. So I think we need to toggle it on, right? Because we've got it on our front door, yeah? We want to put it up the right way around because if not, it's going to be quite difficult to pull out uh, the batteries when you need to change it. Yes, yeah, so the big part on the frame and we're gonna put the little part close to it. Yeah, that's quite cool. I don't know if you want to tuck it in a bit more. We said 25 mil. Yeah, all right, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So that's look, that looks good. Right, so it's asking us for geofencing. The way your geofencing is, it's a way to, when you leave your home, the alarm can either arm for yourself when you come back, you can sort of disarm. So uh, yeah, let's just go yes for now. So obviously you're gonna to need to set up your phone to always access your location. Okay, so once you've got that sorted, we can see a couple of things on the screen. We can see the hub over here, and we can see the room that we set up. So if we tap on the room, we can see actually our sensor. So we can see it's open at the moment because we've had got it right up. We're missing a part over here. So let's see, let's see if we can put it back in and if it actually goes to closed. Front door secure. So it says front door secure. We've got um, a few of the options that we can set up. We've also got a battery level 100%, which is quite useful. And we've got tampered yes or no. Happy with that? Perfect. Nice one. All right, now we're gonna add this motion sensor over here. So to do that, we have gotta to go to settings, uh, go to sensors, tap add new. And again, we just go do the same thing with the QR code. So we get the screwdriver out. Okay, so just pull it out. You can see the battery compartment and the QR code. So let's do QR code first. Now pull the battery out relatively quickly. And you can see it coming out. You've also got this to pull off once you're done. So the instructions say they actually need to put this in the room that you're intending to use it. So we're gonna actually uh, have it in this room, but just try and pair it in the room that you're gonna be uh, using it. All right, cool. So we've got green, also all done. We're gonna continue, name it, just as before. Put it up here, but remember, you need to leave at least five centimeters. So we're just gonna use some easy sticky tape. Think of where you put these contact sensors and these motion sensors. So try to get the most coverage. So if you're concerned that there's a window that might get smashed into, and there's a door, try maybe to put a motion sensor in that room itself, so you're sort of covered. So try and think of the exact positioning or where you want to put these devices, because that's gonna be fundamental for the uh, system of it being effective at all. Right, eight batteries, look at that. There's your spirit level. Where is the QR code? Yeah. Ah, there it is. All right, let's get it up on the wall. So we're gonna go back again onto the settings. So this time, outdoor siren. Yeah, we're gonna add it, scan the QR code. Oh now, yeah, yeah, let's pull the battery tab out. We're unprepared. And as if we knew, pull the battery tab out. There you go, let's put it back in. Hey, there you go, siren's pad. Yeah, just keep out the siren, right? Looking good? Is it straight? I think so. Cool, so we're gonna add in the key fob. We've got two over here. So in the app, we can find where we've got the key fobs. Add one here, depending on what user you have. Tap the key fob to the hub. Cool, so let's switch around. It's actually saying scan for the key fob. So what we'll do is, as it is. 
So we can clear that because that's something we were doing here. We're going to put the siren on. Do you want to arm the alarm? Yeah, let's continue. And so we've got 40 seconds to exit. Now the siren's going to go off. The door's closed. How loud it's going to be for some intruder, right? When they're inside the house? Yeah. Let's see if this could scare them off. Now do you know how to turn it off? Well, no. We're going to improvise, <laughs> right? And so we've got 40 seconds to exit. Hopefully with the fog, we'll just tap on it. Maybe you're going to need to put a code in, so you're going to need to be fast, right? Are you ready? Very fast. All right, so we've got 10 seconds to go. Let's <laughs> put a bit of an anxiety on, yeah? Here we go. Four, three, two, one. All right, the alarm has been armed. We're not moving yet. So if we move the motion, then it's going to go off. Put the, open the door. Enter pin to disarm. So we've got now 40 seconds. Um, so this is like when you come back home. So you've got n amount of seconds to disarm. And I guess that you can also disarm the fob, but we want it to go off now. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially, we need to find out if we can change it in the settings, how long yes. it is between it going off or not. Yes, 40 seconds is quite a long time. I've already got the telly off the wall, but... you already got the telly off the wall. <laughs> Laptop's in the pocket. There you go. There you go, the sign's going off. Go outside. So we tested the alarm, we're quite happy with it. So what's happened is we've got this Tampa detected message that we can't get rid of. It must be something we're doing wrong. So we're probably gonna to need to unclip it again. If not, I'll probably reach out to Boundary and understand what's going on. And we couldn't understand why. Now re-reading the instructions, as I said, we didn't really read them properly at the beginning. We actually spotted that if you tighten the screws too much on the hub, this will cause the Tampa detection to kick off. So if this is happening with you, it's quite an easy fix. You just need a little bit untighten the screws and then reclip the hub onto the frame and then that message will disappear and it will not come back and it hasn't come back since. That's what my friend reported. The second thing that happened was one of our contact sensors it didn't quite pair properly and that is because we pulled the battery tab out before scanning the QR code in the app, which isn't what the instructions say. But this might happen to you as you just instinctively pull it out when you see it. So I contacted customer service as soon as I got home to ask about this contact sensor. I really thought it was defective. But to be fair, in literally nine minutes of raising a support call, I got an email back and it was fantastic. I had all of the instructions of what we needed to do to fix it. And to be fair, they actually fixed it remotely for us and it was all working. It's a really impressive customer service from what I experienced. Let's talk about the smart features. You can arm and disarm this alarm from the app, which is great. You can use geofencing, depending on what subscription service you have, to automatically be notified if you've left the home with the alarm off. You can integrate with your voice assistant from Amazon and from Google. You can also get it integrated in a home assistant, but via smart things that will get improved upon very soon. Uh, overall, I have to say my friends are really, really happy with their system. It is working really well. The hub is responding very well. We did a test and the sensors activated very quickly. And overall, we're very, very happy with it. So how much does this actually cost? Now I'm gonna give you here a screenshot of the actual bundles that you can find on the website at the time of recording. I would suggest you click on the link and check the actual prices in case this changes in the future. For now, I can give you a 45% discount code on any of the bundles if you do want to go ahead and get this boundary alarm system for yourself. Now this system could be an awesome gift for anyone that you know that might not be into home assistant as much as we are. So let's answer the elephant in the room. Why not just build out a home assistant DIY system which you know I have already done many times. Now we're gonna to have to think about that not everyone is willing to learn Home Assistant, to manage it, to build automations with YAML, and to create their own home alarm system. Uh, many people are very busy, and it's not really at that point where you can just simply turn up to someone's house and quickly put some sensors in and put Home Assistant in and just be good. 
One day you might get to that, but for now, these actual systems really speed up that process from getting someone from having no alarm system at all to having a smart alarm system, which will also integrate in Home Assistant in the future very well. It does with smart things, like I said, but I hope you will have a native integration with Home Assistant, which means that if you do put Home Assistant in their home later, then it will work really well. We have to think about security and we need this to be really reliable. And think of the other thing, you can also have police integration if you have this installed professionally, not like we did DIY. So that's also another consideration if someone wants that peace of mind of having the police coming around in case the alarm goes off, which you can't simply do if you build your own alarm system with Home Assistant. However, if you are interested to compare this with a Home Assistant alarm system that I built, then click the video over here where you'll see my 45 minute DIY Home Assistant alarm system. See you later.